Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, March 5th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Addy Oye Jr., and joining me is Tim Ma Buggin Yetis. Bless, how you doing, man? Dude, it's been a morning. It's It's been a beautiful Thursday it's morning, man. It's been a man. beautiful Thursday morning. What a day for PlayStation fans, you know I, what I mean? Dude, it, it's, it's crazy. We yeah. might as well just change the name of the show to exactly. PSL of you, XOXO. Exactly. Still love you, you. Know? you know what I have stuck in my head? You won't mm. you won't guess. Jumpin' what Jumpin' it is. by Destiny's Child? No, but I, I, that is actually a pretty good guess because yeah. that could have been it. Akon. Okay. Since, la, since last night, all like the whole catalog. Oh, just Akon <laughs> yeah. in just general. Just Akon in general. Since okay. last night. So I don't know how I got, I got on Akon, mm-hmm. but for some reason I started listening to Akon last night. That then bled over to this morning because I was like, yo, Akon got some jams. He does. <laughs> Whatever happened to Akon? Dude, for real, that's a good question that I don't want to know the answer to. You know what you I mean? You think it was thinking something I, it bad? It can only be bad things. But like, it can here's only the thing. be bad. Akon's career kind of started off on, on a bad note. I don't know if you remember, but he had to release that, that song, Put the Blame on Me. I think that was like his second album. No, nah, man. You don't I, remember that? Lonely was oh, my dude. introduction. So Lonely was from Akon's man. first album, which was which was Trouble. Uh-huh. And then I think Blame It On Me was his... It had to be his second album in that case. Because th- he got into some controversy. Yeah. Uh, all of it was pretty much his fault. <laughs> but, then, <laughs> but then he did what you cannot do. <laughs> yeah. He did what you're not supposed to do. Uh-huh. But he did it anyway because it was a, it was a different time. We all, it, we all looked over it. Mm-hmm. We put out a song called Blame It On Me, where he's essentially explaining himself through a hit single... A single that was like a jam, like this. This song went hard, and I don't know like where it peaked on the charts. It had to. Be, it had to have peaked number one though. It peaked number one. Kind in of your funny. Heart. Dot com slash you're wrong. Um, but it was one of those things where it's like, man, you you apologized through a song that is making you a lot of money. Yeah, it's one. It was one of those situations. But at oh, the time, we weren't aware. But different time. Man. It was a different time. Different time. And that song was a jam. Of course, today's stories don't include Akon or Convict <laughs> music, even though that's just been, that's made up my whole morning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some hits, man. Convict music, Lonely, baby. Right now, now, now. Oh, right now, oh, my now, God. now. Right now, now, now. It was, it, was, it was a song. Today's stories include PlayStation News, PlayStation News, and even more PlayStation News, because mm-hmm. this is not PS Love You. This is Kind of Funny Games Daily, each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live, right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong. Go into kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live you can watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily to be a, to be a part of the show head to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free and now it's time for some housekeeping we're hosting and producing a debut stream for the game core tim did you hear about this i did you did. It sounds cool. It sounds really cool. On Thursday, March 19th at 3 p.m. Pacific time, you can tune in to twitch.tv slash games to see devs from Manicore Games join Greg as they build multiplayer games live, live in core and invite you to play. Think Dreams if it was used to make Capture the Flag games or death matches in seconds. You can follow at Core Games on Twitter for details and catch the write-up on The Verge right now. Another thing I want to slide in here, tomorrow we're doing a stream that I'm pretty excited for. Oh, really? Uh, Andy Cortez has never played any type of Final Fantasy VII. So what I'm going to have him do, <laughs> what I'm going to have him do, Barrett, is I'm live excited. right here on Twitch.tv slash Games. I'm going to have him play through the early part of the original Final Fantasy VII oh. and then play the <gasps> demo all in one stream. Oh. Wow. Oh. Sounds like a good time. Wow. A good time. I'm what very time excited is that to see Nitro Rifle. Rifle. What time is that happening? Uh, we'll you know see. What? After we'll figure it out. Games in the afternoon. and the morning show and screencast. It's so happening probably, in the afternoon. Probably 2. two yeah. or three. Probably 2 p.m. Pacific time. Awesome. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Muhammad Muhammad, Drew Gardner, Blackjack, and the Kind of Funny Destiny 2 PC clan. Today, we're brought to you by kindoffunny.com slash Patreon, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have five stories today. Up it cares, does And these are some heavy stories. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of content in these five stories. Let's start with number one. Ghost of Tsushima has a new trailer and a release date. This comes from Andrew Goldfarb over on the PlayStation Never blog. Heard Never heard of him. Ghost of Tsushima is coming to PS4 on June 26th. It is so exciting to finally be able to announce our release date. And this is, of course, Andrew Goldfarb speaking on behalf of Sucker, Sucker Punch. And even better, that it's just a few months away. We can't wait to share the world we've created. Today, we revealed a brand new trailer that showcases our hero, Jin Sakai. In the past, we've shown the world around Jin, but this time we wanted to give you a taste of the people he meets along his journey and the scale of the threat that forces him to transform into a new kind of warrior. While you'll catch glimpses 
catch glimpses of several of Jin's allies and enemies in today's trailer, there are two we want to focus on in particular. The first is Jin's uncle, Shimura, the Jito of Tsushima, and a father a father figure to Jin. He's trained Jin since childhood. Jito means lord. Jito does mean lord. The, so he's like the lord of Tsushima as opposed to the ghost of Tsushima, mm -hmm. which I believe is Jin. Mm -hmm. He's trained Jin since childhood in the traditional ways of the samurai and grows increasingly concerned by the tactics of tactics Jin, Jin starts to adopt as he abandons the teachings and becomes the ghost. Can we stop there? Mm -hmm. Can we just appreciate how dope a fucking sentence that is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And really quick, I just want to shout out happy birthday, Andrew Goldfarb. Is it his birthday day? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. A fun little birthday yeah, present. Yeah, happy birthday. He gets, to, he gets to reveal his game. The second important character we're, we're highlighting today is Kotun Khan. The Khan is the leader of the invading Mongol army. The Khan. Yeah, dude. They're called this motherfucker <laughs> the Khan. Whoa, and a ruthless, cunning enemy who uses everything he knows about the samurai to try and destroy them. He's a brutal, unrelenting adversary that Jin will, qu will quickly learn not to underestimate. And then the PS blog also shows off some collector's editions. If Barry, you want to check that out and put, it, put them on screen because they look pretty cool. But uh, Tim, me and you watched the trailer right before mm -hmm. this. You can watch our live reactions first time we ever saw it over on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. What was your overall, overall takeaway from the Dude, trailer? Dude, I'm super in. Uh, yeah. You know, both of us, I kind of feel, are on the same page where this was the PlayStation exclusive that we were like uh, it's excited about. Yeah. But it was kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if this is necessarily for me. This trailer shows this is 100% for me. Yeah. It is finally the, the, the first time that. This game has looked pretty to me, but it hasn't looked cool. Now it's merging both of those things together, and we're seeing some gameplay that actually interests me. And I feel like we're really seeing what late PlayStation 4 hardware usage can look like. Mm -hmm. And, God, we're, we're about to get this game and Last of Us so close together, man. Yeah, I think the, the only sucky thing is that this game is coming out, out after The Last of Us, and I feel like that is then putting so much pressure on this game to perform, and it might get outshined a little bit, but even... Even still, I'm super excited to play this game. The trailer was beautiful. The uh, June 26th date, mm -hmm. I think, is, is pretty. I think on um, on in the live reaction, you said that you were a little bit surprised. Is that what you said? It's, it's not so much surprise. I just think that that timing kind of dictates some information, right? Okay. We don't know when the PlayStation Five is coming. We're assuming it's going to be somewhere around November, mm -hmm. May, like Holiday. maybe maybe October. The coronavirus might change all of that. Mm -hmm. We'll see. But if plans you know, happen as they're, they're planned currently, I imagine that the PS5 would be November, and that kind of raises some flags to me of when is the reveal event going to be, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to get in the way of promoting these games unless you are smart and use these games as promotion for the PS5. And I think that I I, I think 100% that's going to happen, but then also I feel like they find themselves in a weird predicament because they have to have exclusives in this last year of the PS4, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like they're gonna have to announce the PS5 at a certain point. Like, I think last time it was Last of Us One came out in June, and the PS4 was revealed in February, right? And there was some separation between those two reveals, right? That's four months between you talking about the PS4 and then later on releasing the Last of Us. But even still, I imagine this is probably gonna come mm, like this and Last of Us Two are probably gonna be around when the PS5 is gonna be like really revealed and, yeah. and blown and I mean, out. That's the thing is, you know, this generation, like we've been talking about for a year now, very different than the last couple generations. So the crossover is gonna be a lot smoother. So I don't think that there's the concern that there there used to be of like, oh man, like Last of Us is a PlayStation 4 game. Mm -hmm. It's like, cool, this is a PlayStation game. You're gonna be able to play it on, yeah. on PS5 as well with the backwards compatibility. Like I think 100% the PS5 commercials are gonna have Ghost of Tsushima in there. Gonna, they're gonna have Last of Us Part 2 in there. They're gonna mm -hmm. have Final Fantasy uh, 7 in there. The Cyberpunk's gonna be in there along with the next gen games. Jesus Christ, man. We look right? just like <laughs> th this year of PlayStation exclusive content, even though. Final Fantasy eventually won't be, but like mm -hmm. we're about to, dude. It's like just Neo, gonna be that, Neo like, Two could probably the be in there, like starting to go. Yeah, Persona exactly. Five Royal is probably gonna be in there. Uh, I know, I think Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is a PlayStation exclusive, but that like that's There's, probably okay, not gonna be in cool, there. But, but all that just still. enhances the fact that we're talking Final Fantasy Seven Remake, Last of Us Part Two, and now Ghost of Tsushima. Which great, a new IP that looks rad. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it coming out after Last of Us is that big of a deal. Last of Us, I transcends. Last of Us is bigger than video games, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about that later. Yes. Uh, but Last of Us Part Two, I think, is going to be looked at in a way that everyone that owns a PlayStation 4 is going to get that game. Yeah. That's not going to stop them 
from looking at Ghost of Tsushima separately and being like, am I also getting that? Yeah. I just think they're just so close because I'm I gotta look up the date for the last list because May it's May sixth. But I wanna say they're like a month. So they're less than a month. So May 29th, and then, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima is June 26th. And so that's less than a month between releases, which I think, I, it's, one, it's good that Cyberpunk is coming out in the fall now instead of the, the, the spring. Because, God, could you imagine? No. Could you imagine? Um, but ultimately, like, Ghost of Tsushima is going to, I think, be fine. It's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. It's, gonna be, it's hopefully going to be good. Um, but I feel like them being that close to each other, Last, Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima, kind of puts a shadow over it just a bit because last of part two i think people are looking at as as like oh this game is going to be generation defining Mm -hmm. whereas people don't have those expectations for ghost of tsushima yet and that's my thing that all it has to do is be good Mm -hmm. like i don't think that they they need to i mean obviously it'd be better if it was a 10 out of 10 classic but i i just feel like the game just needs to be regarded on the level even of days gone and if they do Mm -hmm. that PlayStation has a new hit franchise on its hands. I mean, I feel like it has to be way better than Days Gone, though. But I'm talking about just in terms of, like, the, you know, consumer reaction to Days Gone. The game Uh sold well. People enjoyed it. It's like Days Gone will be marked down as a success at the end of the day, right? I don't know. I mean, yes, people bought it, and, like, people were fine with it. But I feel like at this point for a PlayStation exclusive, there's a certain level that, that they've set as far as what it means to be a PlayStation exclusive, like there's a level of, level of quality, right? Yeah. We look at God of War, we look at Last of Us, we look at Spider Man, right? And we kind of and we look at Horizon, right? And we look we we see we, we see those as the ideal PlayStation exclusives. And so for me, like Days Gone did fine. Like it wasn't I wouldn't say Days Gone is a failure, but in comparison to what we see as PlayStation, PlayStation exclusives, and and in comparison to what I believe they want from a PlayStation exclusive. I think Days Gone was sort of, sort of a failure, and so I I think Ghost of Tsushima doesn't necessarily need to be on that level of Horizon and Spider Man, but I don't think it can be too far beneath that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I feel like the the gap between the Days Gone and the Horizons isn't that wide, so, to the point that like I feel like Ghost of Tsushima literally just needs to not suck mm-hmm. <laughs> like it just needs to be a quality video game because that will just get people excited enough of like oh there's a new ip like sucker punch doing something different like mm-hmm. they need their horizon moment that gorilla had right yeah they just need to be like oh well look like they this is what they're going to be doing because at this point it is moving into next gen and this is sony being like the one two three four five six punches of yo motherfuckers this is why you need a, P- a playstation 5 because yeah. we build our brand we believe in this we have the first party titles Fendi writes in and says, "What's up, guys? I'm assuming the Ghost of Tsushima trailer will be the head will be headlining this episode. So I wanted to ask two questions. Considering Sucker Punch's previous franchise, is there any chance we'll see a hint of superpowers in this game? Secondly, is there a chance? Is there any chance of this game being pushed back from its June release date? Thanks and have a great day. So starting with the second question, will it be pushed back from its June release date? I don't think I don't I don't really think there's a chance. Like this game was already ready to go for." I th- was it? Re- I don't think it had an original date, but I think it originally was probably planned for like Mish, where Last of Us Part Two is now, and Last of Us Part Two being delayed, then delayed back goes to Tsushima. Yeah. And so in theory, they would have already been ready to go by the time Last of Us is coming out. Mm-hmm. And so I think in terms of prepa- point. I think in terms of preparedness for the game, I think that game is going to be ready to go. That said, I think. You know, exterior factors could play a, exterior. I think I, I guess external. external. Thank you. External factors could could play a part, and so yeah. I don't know how like if something happened with the Last of Us, which I doubt. I mean, they announced but, the Last of Us release date and then changed it a week like, later. A week later. Yeah. So it's like anything can happen. But I think I think you're you're onto something there about you know where Ghost lies compared to Last of Us and where it's coming out now is probably reactionary too. To the rest of it, yeah. But also, like we keep talking about, like PlayStation Five is coming. Like there has to be some type of roadmap and has to be some type of plan. And like Sony doesn't want to step on on its own toes. Yeah, so. and that's the thing. That's what I'm talking about with external factors, right? Like, who, who knows how the PS Five reveal kind of comes into play? Who knows how coronavirus, might especially come into play? with the coronavirus? Yeah, because yeah, like like the coronavirus has affected things in ways that I would not have perceived if you asked me a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. And so like, who knows? But I think in terms of preparedness, I I, I have confidence that this game is gonna. Be ready to go. Yeah. June 26th. Number two. The Last of Us series is in... Wait, yeah, The Last of Us series is in the works at HBO from Chernobyl creator Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann. So The Last of Us is like TV series. Holy fuck. Yeah, dude. Hard stop real quick. 
It's not just, oh, oh man, Last of Us getting a movie. It's kind of like Uncharted. Maybe it's going to happen. Maybe it's not. This is HBO. Mm -hmm. This is Chernobyl people mm -hmm. with Druckmann. What the hell? There's no chance this is bad. <laughs> like, this is about to be freaking amazing. Dude, this was the news where, like, I woke up and saw the Ghost of Tsushima stuff, and I was like, okay, cool. That's going to be probably the number one story <laughs> on KFGD. And then I come to the office, and I'm, like, putting together the KFGD doc, and Barrett's like, hey, how, did you see the Last of Us news? And I was like, oh, you mean Ghost of Tsushima? He's like, no, Last of Us. And I was like, what? And then I forget if you if you sent it to me or if you told it to I me. I was like, yeah, uh, there's a HBO Last of Us show happening. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, no, you're, you're lying. Like, what? You're lying. <laughs> Lies. Uh, this comes as an exclusive from The Hollywood Reporter, written by Boris Kitt and Patrick Shanley. Craig Mazin, the creator of the acclaimed limited series Cher uh, Chernobyl, is reteaming with HBO to adapt The Last of Us, the massive Sony PlayStation video game franchise. In a rare de development in the world of video game adaptations, the writer and creative director of the game, Neil Druckmann, is also involved and will work with Mazin into pen and, and, and ex executive produce what is intended to be a series. Carolyn Strauss will also pr executive produce along with Evan Wells, the president of Naughty Dog, the, San the Santa Monica-based developer of the game. The project, the project is a co-production with Sony, Sony Pictures Television and in associ association with PlayStation Productions, and it will be the first television series coming from PlayStation Productions, which is notable because you love to see it. Yeah, we, this is how they. We've been talking about they should do this. Partner yeah. with people that are already doing it right. We Marvel games, right? They've been doing this with their their video games for years at this point. Hey, we're not going to make a Spider Man game. We're going to get Insomniac to make a Spider Man game. Sony right here is doing the smart move the other way, where they're like, "Yo, we're not going to make the TV shows. Yeah. We're going to go to HBO." Because I will say, when they first announced PlayStation Productions, I want to say it was last year, or maybe mm -hmm. two years ago. Last year, yeah. I was, a, uh, I was a hater. Yeah, <laughs> legit. I was like, "Yo, like I love Sean Layden. I don't want Sean Layden to be making movies. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to see any sort of PlayStation like in-house like, movie studio. That's not what I want. The way they're going about it here, right? This is the perfect way to do it." And Druckmann's involved. Yes. Intimately involved. This is this is it, man. This Dude. is it. This is how you build the foundation for a potential huge, massive success. Taking Last of Us and putting it in, in front of the mainstream this way, oh my God. Again, yeah. we're talking about going into PlayStation 5. The hype train has left the, the station, man. It is full steam ahead right now. Mm -hmm. Originally launched... In 2013, Sony and Naughty Dog's The Last of Us garnered critical praise for its engrossing tale of the post-apocalypse post centered on, a, on the relationship between Joel, a smuggler in this new world, and Ellie, a teenager who may be a cure for the deadly pandemic. Joel, a hardened survivor, is hired to smuggle the 14-year-old girl out of an oppressive quarantine zone. What starts as a small job soon becomes a brutal, heartbreaking journey as they both must traverse across the U.S. and depend on each other for survival. The HBO series will cover the events of the original game, which was written by Druckmann, with the possibility of additional content based on the forthcoming game sequel, The Last of Us Part Two, which will release May 29th. I just got chills. This is awesome. Yeah. Mason who is said to be an avid player of the game, stated, quote, Neil Druckmann is without question the finest storyteller working in the video game medium, and The Last of Us is his magnum opus. Getting a chance to adapt his, uh, this breath breathtaking work of art has been, been a dream of mine for years, and I'm so honored to do it with the partnership with Neil. Quote, from the first time I sat down with sat down to talk to Greg, I was equally blown away by his approach to, to narrative and his love and deep understanding of The Last of Us, said, Dr said Druckmann in a statement. With Chernobyl, Craig, and HBO created, uh, created a tense, harrowing, emotional masterpiece. I couldn't think of, of better partners to bring the story of The Last of Us to life as a television show. This is an incredible, incredibly exciting opportunity for us to partner with Craig, Neil, Carolyn, and the teams at Sony, Naughty Dog, and PlayStation to bring the virtual world of this acclaimed game to life, stated HBO programming president Casey Bloys. Quote, this is the first of many shows we intend to develop with our friends at PlayStation Productions, said Chris Parnell, co-president of Sony Pictures Television Studios. The Last of Us is a brilliant achievement in storytelling and character development, and we are lucky to have the opportunity to, to work with this team to adapt it. Wow. Are you, uh, are you in for the idea that it is following the, the first game? Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, it mm -hmm. has to. Here's the thing. Do we need this? No. No. <laughs> but if we're going to get it, this, this is, is the way, way to, do it. to do it. It's like, you know, we always talk about video games and why they work and why they are different than TV. We don't need a mo movie or TV version of things that we love. We mm -hmm. have them. That's what they are. They're video games. They, they should be enjoyed that way. But this is how you do translate mediums if you're going to do it. Find the people that are doing it better than anyone else and care and make mm -hmm. sure that the, the actual visionaries are behind it and they're involved. Uh, I think that we're in a different era where 
we we saw superhero movies kick off, right? Mm -hmm. And there's always thing of like, oh, well, are we gonna get good video game movies? Like, when's that actually gonna happen? And I think that with things like Detective Pikachu and Sonic, we've kind of seen ways that that could work. Not that those are masterpieces, yeah. but those aren't like the revolutions, you know, of video games as movies. Exactly, they're just they're, they're movies. They're yeah, good movies. They're good they're, movies. You know, whatever. But I feel like with things like The Witcher series on Netflix uh -huh. and potentially Last of Us on HBO, it's like we might see this like new era of, hey, we're going to do this shit correctly. And like Witcher, I guess, technically based on the books or whatever, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like people see that and like a lot of people do associate Identify it that with, with the game. game more than, than the book series. But um, I, I think this is fantastic news any way you look at it. Yeah, I'm 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 really into it. Uh, I'm curious on what other TV shows they might have in the works because yeah, Sony Pictures Television Studios is saying here that they they intend to develop more with PlayStation, PlayStation productions. Take your time, guys. Like, and let's so, not, like, let's I not know, get hasty. I want to know what that means. An Uncharted TV show, even though they're already working on the movie. Yeah, we'll fucking see, man. I would probably be more down for an Uncharted TV show than a movie. I'd say. I don't know, man. I, Uncharted is about the spectacle. You need budget for that. Yeah. But I also like for those for those characters. I kind of want to spend more time with them. You mm. know, I don't like kind of being in and out in that in that way with like um, Nathan Drake and and um, so Elena Sully. and Soli. Like I, I I like the idea of having that relationship kind of grow over a long period of time as opposed to rushed in two hours. Barrett, what's up? What do you have to say? I was going to ask, who do we cast as Joel and Ellie? Yeah, Ellie got has got to be what's her name from Game of Thrones. Macy Williams. Macy. Oh, Macy Williams. Yeah. I feel like she's too old at this point. I don't know, man. She looks really young. She has that young girl energy. You know what I mean? <laughs> or actually, well, here's the thing. I was going to say Ellie should be, um, what's her name? Gia Harris. Uh, it's not super bad. Juno. What? Ellen Page? Yeah, she's but Ellen even Page older. Oh no, I'm just saying at this point she's she, Ellen Page is way too old at this point. <laughs> I, I, she I, also has young girl energy though. She does. I, I, I would say cast a no name. Specifically I was about for to say yeah, Ellie, no names or um, uh, Lara Lara from Logan. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. See, yeah. I would have said um, <laughs> Logan from Logan. <laughs> Hugh Jackman, Hugh as, Jackman Joel? as Joel, yeah. <laughs> that that movie is essentially just kind yeah, of that, the last human, of that movie is yeah. the last of us, <laughs> if you think about it. Let's cast both of them, dude. Fuck it. What I if you, what that. if you go to HBO and it's just Logan? You like turn on the Last Wish <laughs> show and it's like, oh, I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> Logan, that's fantastic. Number three. Sony names new head of Santa Monica Studio. This is by Matt Kim of IGN. <laughs> like I said, what? PlayStation Greg News. Miller PlayStation goes away news, for five minutes news. and all this shit pops off. Earlier today, Google announced a brand new video game studio in Playa Vista, California, created to develop games exclusively for Stadia. To head up the new studio, Google tapped former God of War executive producer Shannon Studstill to lead the, the new show. endeavor. Uh, as for, st as for uh, Santa Monica Studio, PlayStation has announced the new studio head to replace her. In a statement to IGN, Santa Monica Studio has announced Yumi Yang, a 19-year veteran at PlayStation, as the next studio head for its Santa Monica location. And when, when I first read this, I kept, re I kept reading 19-year-old. Yeah. And no, it's 19 year veteran. <laughs> because when I first saw it, I was like, that, wait, really? Uh, what? 19 years old. What a prodigy. <laughs> bold move. Bold, wow, bold new direction for God of War. Uh, so Sony Santa Monica's full statement reads as follow, follows Quote We extend our warmest congratulations to, to Shannon Studstill on her new role. Under her leadership, the studio she helped found over 20 years ago massively reinvented itself and its, its greatest franchise with 2018's God of War. In her role as VP of Product Development, Shannon helped smaller ind independent teams incubate within the studio, leading to, to groundbreaking works like Journey and The Unfinished Swan. All of PlayStation is better and grateful, uh, grateful of her many years of exemplary service and bold creative vision. Taking over as a studio head is Yumi Yang, a 19-year PlayStation veteran with an extensive background in product development and heavy involvement across many of Sa Sony Santa Monica's biggest games. Her project management prowess and meticulous oversight of 2018's God of War helped the title fully realize its groundbreaking potential. After nearly two decades and countless substantial contributions to Sony Santa Monica Studios' rich legacy, Yumi has the unquestioned respect and trust of her peers. With her vast experience and deep understanding of the studio's distinct creative DNA, she is perfectly positioned to lead Sony Santa Monica Studio to a bold, new, exciting future. I love this. All fantastic news. Yeah. Shannon's great, and I feel like this is great news for Stadia. Yep. Like congratulations, she's a, to everybody. Been a real winner over there, and like yeah. that, like there's there's hope. 
You know what I mean? Like maybe they can. Do you like, think there's hope for Stadia? Because I mean, that's what me. These are the move. These are the moves you got to make, right? Yeah, I mean for sure. But the thing that me and Gary were kind of talking about yesterday is and that I noticed specifically is that this is only their second studio that they've opened for Stadia, mm-hmm. which for me tells me that that they're trying and that they're committed, but <clears throat> doesn't necessarily imbue hope. Like I'm not necessarily looking at Stadia like okay, this is gonna turn the ship. Like I feel like they got they got to make a lot of moves. Over oh, there. absolutely. But I, I do think this is a long game. Like, this is, you know, not something that we need to look at in a year and be like, oh, shit, did they win or lose? It's Mm -hmm. like, 10 years from now, where's Stadia at? And I'm not hopeful, but there is hope. And I feel like if they keep making decisions like this, like, that could turn out to be a bright future for them. Could. Mm -hmm. Um, But the other side of this is I I love how PlayStation's talking about this. I love that they are both sending Shannon off and setting uh, Yumi up. Yes. So, So nicely, so seamlessly in a way that doesn't seem... You know, upset doesn't seem malicious. It definitely seems like a, a great like. Yeah, hey, we're it seems all on this. clear and communicative. Yes. Unlike how they a been lot of little, other little, things have happened. Yeah, a little bit lately, and so uh, this is nice to see. Congratulations to both Yumi and Shannon. I'm gonna He's I'm gonna call like Greg news. Miller. There's that's a, actually a good idea. There's a, a slim that chance that he'll, he'll answer because he's over yeah. up in the, in Canada right now. But he he knows these people mm-hmm. in a way that we don't. Yeah. So hopefully hopefully he answers here. Hold on. Boom. Greg Miller, of Boom. course, in Canada. We don't know what he's doing in Canada, do we? Is he at that PlayStation 5 event? Who knows? Who the hell knows? <laughs> Hello, Tim. Greg Miller, you are on Kind of Funny yeah. Games Daily right now. Hi, Kind of Funny Games Daily. It's me, Greg Miller, from the internet. We are talking about Shannon Studstill, Yumi Yang. What is your read on all of this? It's crazy, right? Shannon, Shannon has been like... I mean, what, she's a founder of that studio, right? 20 mm-hmm. years of that studio. She's been behind everything Sony Santa Monica's ever put out. She's been, I really think, brought to another level, you know, with obviously, as, as Santa Monica was in general with God of War. So to see her really, I think, be at the height of her powers publicly, then step away to go to Google Stadia, I would love to know how big that check was. Huh. That's, that's my takeaway. How much money did Google drop on her? But I mean, you know, you are at a place long enough, I, I'm sure. You, I, what's left to accomplish, too? You figure she was there uh, when God of War was its huge success and, you know, it, it got its legs going, right, with the PS2. And then to have it go away, right, wane with uh, Ascension and then bring it back to prominence with Corey. I guess that you want to leave on a high note in some regards. Yeah. What about, what about Yumi? Do you know her? I only know of her through her reputation and through her work, obviously, with Corey on God of War. Uh, you know, I've seen so many people bring up, if you watch the Raising Kratos documentary again, you see her in all, all the time. You see Corey talk about it all the time. You see the partnership back and forth. I think it's a really speaks to how, how much she looked at as a leader in the same way Herman looked at as a leader, right, from when he was in Thrillist now, be running Worldwide Studios. Uh, same thing for her, right, that if people look at her uh, to champion and shepherd through Corey on that project, right, to be his second set of eyes on it. Uh, the fact that she's taking over is great for them, too. There you go. Thank you very much, Greg. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Greg. All right, you tell everybody, P.S. I love you tapping on Monday. I'm coming home. You coming home? I got to come home. I got to come home. There's too much place. Too much going on, man. Oh, yeah, too much HBO, happening. baby. Let's go. Yeah, man. I know, right? Ridiculous. Holy shit. All right, have fun. Bye, bye. Bye. Yeah, and that's what I probably should include in the housekeeping is that I think Greg, it seems like Greg is going to be back. Yeah. By Monday. So we might be able to record an episode of PS Love because there's so much going on. Hell yeah, you got it. And man. we might push the the under ratings until the week after. Yeah. But stay tuned. We'll be more communicative about that <laughs> as that approaches. <laughs> now here's what I've done. Coronavirus has has fed its way into video game news. Every every day I come in and I'm looking for stories, and half the stories involve coronavirus. And we've been talking about coronavirus every single day. And so I'm now sectioning the coronavirus news You're together. It. I'm quarant- I'm quarantining the coronavirus news together. So that way, you know, it, I know this is coronavirus games daily, mm-hmm. right? That's the new name, new mm-hmm. name of the show. CBGD. Yeah, I'm trying I'm I'm trying to do my best to make sure that that's not all we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And so this is what this is how I'm doing it. Okay. And so this is the coronavirus section of the news. Number four, the ESA has released an update to a statement about E3 still happening this year. This comes as an update from GamesIndustry.biz by Rebecca Valentine. With the city of Los Angeles having declared a state of emergency today, the ESA has issued a new statement on the situation. Quote, The health and safety of our attendees, exhibitors, partners, and staff is our top priority. While the ESA continues to plan for a safe and successful E3 E3 show June 9th through 11th, 2020, we are monitoring and evaluating the situation daily. 
quote, our E3 team and partners continue to monitor COVID-19 via the, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which is the CDC, and the World Health Organization, the WHO. We are actively assessing the latest information and will continue to, to develop measures to further reduce health risks at the show. This is all insane. Yeah. Man. Like, how the, it's the get, fact that this is the a day, reality that crazy. we are in and things are just happening one after James Bond getting delayed yesterday, not because the movie's not finished, but because they don't think that enough people are going to go to the theaters yeah, to watch it. Yeah, if you release it, yeah. That is. It, it, it's one of those things where we all got to be careful about the fear mongering side of all this and about like, you know, not buying into the hype of the fear. Mm -hmm. But there's a reality that is setting in of like, hey, like this, there's ramifications of all of this. Yeah. Barrett and I were talking a little about, about this yesterday, but it's like with E3, if coronavirus were to cancel E3 this year, can E3 survive that? At what point do all of the, the publishers and developers just go all digital, mm -hmm. go entirely Nintendo Direct, yeah. not need that type of um, you know, presentation. Yeah. Because you realize it's not really what you need. Like I think E3 will still serve the purpose, or could still serve the purpose of getting people's hands on games, but that's also th also something you can figure out without E3. Right? Yeah. There are other solutions to making that happen. The ramifications of all this stuff, we're gonna st there's going to start to be very clear. And I, it's, it's going to be crazy to, to see how much this continues to affect not just the industry we're in, but the world that we're in. Mm -hmm. But it's like, at what point does the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X get delayed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like at what point can they not manufacture enough uh, parts and stuff to launch when they want to launch? Yeah. What does that mean for everything? What does that mean for the economy? Like, this is some real shit, man. Yeah, and that was the question somebody asked yesterday of like, do you delay? Say there aren't enough parts to manufacture the or not not enough labor or whatever it is like you don't have the resources to manufacture enough ps5s and xbox series x's for launch in the holiday do you then delay to the to the next year or do you just go with what you got and just have shortages like what is the, what is the answer i i don't know and yeah. i mean dude think about it this way what if xbox or playstation what if only one of them has the resources and the other doesn't mm -hmm. what's that going to mean for the next gen race yeah right there's, there's a lot a lot here, man. There's a lot. And then number five, Microsoft asks employees to work from home over coronavirus fears. I don't know where I got this from, and so I might Google it because I want to cite correctly. Actually, Microsoft has asked its employees yes, in Seattle you. and San Francisco to work from home until March 25th in response to the novel coronavirus. And this is from GamesIndustry.biz, written by Hayden Taylor. Thank you. Barrett. In a company blog post, Microsoft CDO Kurt Del Bain offered guidance for employees in order to minimize risk of infection. Among the recommendations is to postpone all non-essential travel to the uh, Seattle or Bay Area campuses, limit the length of in-person meetings, keep distance from other people. Quote, taking these measures will ensure your safety and also make the workplace safer for those who uh, – that. They need to be on site. Gia, um, same situation with her work where mm. they're all working from home indefinitely. It's crazy scary, shit, dude, man. Scary times we live in, dude. Um, so when is kind of funny going to do this? When am I going to be able to work from home? I, I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> that's not like, I don't know. <laughs> there is no working from home. <laughs> Jamie S. writes in and says, good morning, Blessing and Tim. Microsoft is encouraging their employees in Seattle and San Francisco to work from home to, to hopefully reduce their chances of catching coronavirus. In fact, many businesses across the country and across multiple industries are considering business continuity plans that, that can reduce health risks and keep the business running during this unpredictable, unpredictable time. Do you think this is a smart move by Microsoft? What other preventative changes might we see companies make to their day-to-day -day operations internally it's kind of funny working on its own business con continuity plan what steps might you take to ensure the health and safety of the team there thanks for reading i think like one this is only an office of nine people and so there's a lot less fear than it's like, different than yeah it's a different a situation Twitter or a facebook or a microsoft yeah where it's like where there can be like tens of thousands of people in the same building the bigger problem is like you know and the, the, i was joking about this but it's it's scary at the same time it's like i live with my brother and joey that's mm -hmm. half of kind of funny. <laughs> so working from home, we're still at risk. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like there, there's a – I don't know, man. I, like in, what's kind of funny going to do with the with, – I don't know. We're going to keep our ears to the ground. We're going to try to try to figure this out. And yeah. I've been washing my hands more. <laughs> yeah, we've been all washing hands I mean, I've washed my hands before, more. but like – A lot more. I've like, been more – like Vigorously. I'll, yeah, I was saying this – I want to say earlier in the week or maybe last week about like I went to pump gas in my car mm -hmm. and I went to McDonald's and I was like, I am not touching this food until after I wash my hands because I just touched this gas pump. And yeah. like, I would have done that anyway, but still like it's, it's, I, it, it's way more conscious. You're aware. Of it. It. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which is good, and I think that we're all all that way. Yeah, and I think it's a smart move by Microsoft. I think at the very least, it's a smart move because you're you're showing that you care about your workers. You mm-hmm. know, you're you're um, making them feel safe. You're making them feel secure and secure in you as a as a company. Yeah, and I mean, here, here's the thing of like, what steps might we take and all that stuff, and to go with what you're saying. I'm saying this right now. It's the same policy kind of funny he's always had when it comes to his employees, which is like whatever you guys need to feel safe and whatever you guys want. It's like if you guys want to work from home, we'll figure that out. Mm-hmm. You know. But. Yeah, I mean, I did I did podcast on Hangouts for like four years. Yeah, I, we can figure out a way. Yeah, we can figure out a way. Tim, I'm mm-hmm. excited to see. I'm not even excited to see. No. I'm curious to see how coronavirus progresses over the next what? few months. Uh, but we'll see. The next few months are so far away. If I want to know what's coming to Mom and Rob shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Do 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 do. Sure. Out today, we got Murder by by Numbers for the Switch, okay, okay. Ib and Ob for the Switch. Barrett, look up Ib and Ob. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got a better one. I, I okay. I uh, one. Undernight Inbirth EXE Late CLR for PS4, which I've been playing, uh, and I'll talk about that on PSLV XOXO because that's uh, one of our 104 games we're we're ranking. Dude, stop for Switch. Dude, stop. Dude, is the name of a game. Comma, stop for Switch. Unlock the King for Switch. That's what happens when I play NBA Street Volume 2. <laughs> Wonderling for Switch. Kai Robotica for Switch. Spacky's Night Shift for PC, which I feel uncomfortable saying. I don't know why, but that doesn't sound like a thing I should be saying. <laughs> Operation Citadel for PC and Mac. N- Nagi Q for PC. <laughs> the Longing for PC and Mac. Tiny Bunny for PC and oh, Mac. Oh, Tiny Bunny. Factory Rally Madness for PC. Broomstick League for PC, and then Champions of Thora for PC. Barrett, Barrett what do you have for us here? He, got, he gave us a little tiny bunny. Oh, here, wow. And tiny bunny looks horrifying. More terrifying than I would have thought. Real I was thinking Benicula like, vibes. I was thinking a cute game. Oh, wow. Oh, this is like a visual novel. Like a black and white hand. Yo, this drawn. is actually pretty cool. This looks like a, almost like a anti Doki Doki Literature Club kind of deal. Oh, I didn't play it. Whoa. It's like a scary. Oh. Man, it's a cat. The cat kill him? I, no, I saw nothing. There's like policemen at the door. Dude, this is actually pretty cool style. Yeah, it, it looks really cool. I'm shocked that it's called Tiny Bunny. Yeah. Oh man, like stay this. out of those woods. I don't like this woods. All right. All right. What did you did you bring up anything else, or was that the one? That was the one. Okay. New dates. Ghost of Tsushima is out on PS4 June 26th. Zombie Army Trilogy marches on to Nintendo Switch on March 31st. And then story-driven cyberpunk ex- exploration game Cloudpunk is launching on PC on April 23rd. Which, have you seen gameplay of Cloudpunk? Mm-mm. I've been getting emails uh, about it, and it looks kind of interesting. It looks like you're a taxi driver. Barrett, look up Cloudpunk. I want to see a little It's like a cyberpunk. cyberpunk. I want to s- I don't want to misspeak because I don't know what you're actually doing, but it looks like you're driving like a, a, a Jeep. <laughs> or not a Jeep, but like a, 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 a van. Yeah, this is it. It looks really cool. Interesting. Like stylistically. Yeah, you're like flying in this in this kind of flying van through this cyberpunk world. An Inlands game. I drive between the skyscrapers. Curious neon giants that stretch out to infinity. I kind of want to play this game. Yeah, that looks really cool. This will be a long night. Oh, it looks like you get to go on foot too. I've always wanted to like fly around in like the like you know in, like the Star Wars prequels where they have like flying around in the air and shit. Yeah. But it's like still traffic and shit. I've always been like into that. Hey, Barrett. What's up? I'm sending you something right now. All right. All right. You can bring this down, Barrett. Uh, again, that's coming out on PC on April 23rd. So uh, before we move on to reader mail and stuff, I was going to save this for Internet Explorers, but I feel it's pretty apt for this show. Oh. Pretty cool thing uh, came up on Twitter today. Oh. Um, once Barrett brings it up, I will. You send it to assets? Yes, I did. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. What the hell? Barrett, me and you, Cloud Punk, Let's Play series. Cloud Punks. Oh, you guys are a little Cloud Punks. Yeah, dude. <laughs> there we go. Did I bring you in, Bear? Are you are you down? Me and you? We don't even have to do it for kind of funny. We can start our own Let's Play channel. Bear and Blessing. The BBs. The BBs. You get that? 
Yeah, I got. It. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this is I saw this because Mike Bithel. Uh, oh, I saw retweeted this too. it. Uh, go out for a second. So Lance McDonald tweets, uh, good day's work. God of War's camera is fully hacked. No clipping, ability to start and stop time freely, and works fully during cutscenes. It's activated by entering special button presses on the map screen, and it works great. So you can see, especially since God of War was all done in one take, mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting to move the camera back and see how things work, even in cutscene, and check this shit out. So this is, of course, the first hour or so of the game is Kratos. Fighting. Like, this is just so rad. Oh, like, yeah. I would never think about this, but, like, the mo like when he gets up and, like, knocks Kratos, and it's just like, holy shit, this is insane. Because, like, there's so much shit you just don't see because of the where yeah. the camera's facing, right? Scroll forward a bit. Yeah, there's one moment that I think is super, super fun in this. Yeah, there's... Oh, for a second, I thought it was Atreus. Like this is super rad. Now, now pop out of this. Scroll down a bit. Yeah, look that's at that. what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so he shows that at the end. But yeah, when when this Balder, right? Yeah. 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 When when Kratos throws Balder off the cliff, if you if you position the camera to him like falling all the way down, then yeah, this is like the position he's falling Great. falling down in. That's perfect. I love it, man. Video that's games awesome. are cool. Video games are dope. Now it's time for Reader Mail. You can write into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can get the show ad-free. And speaking of ads, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by kindoffunny.com slash Patreon. Mm -hmm. If you thought about backing Kind of Funny on Patreon so that you can get a question asked or get a squat, squat up read, but you haven't because you've been scared off by how complicated the system is, worry no more. Thanks to our sponsor, kindoffunny.com slash Patreon. When you go to kindoffunny.com slash Patreon, you're given four simple choices to decide where you want to go ask your question. Just click away. It's so easy. Even Greg Miller can do it. Ginger Crazy Kid writes in to patreon.com slash kindoffunny, or kindoffunny.com slash Patreon, I should say, since that was what I just literally, literally sponsored. It says, hello, KFGD hosts. Control, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Wolfenstein were added to PS Now this month. This, this follows a string of high-profile games going into the service on a monthly basis, with these being very recent. Sony slash PlayStation seem to be making good changes to PS Now, and I'm really enjoying my time with it. My question is, when do they pull the trigger and add all first-party games day and date to the service and match Xbox Game Pass? Is it before or after the PS launch or the PS5 launch? Thanks for everything you do. That's not going to happen. Yeah, it's not. What? Sorry to, sorry to break the news. Do you think that's going to happen? <laughs> Maybe for PS5, man. No. I mean... Maybe late PS5, like late late, late generation, if I, they have to, but I don't think so. That would be a crazy masterstroke of just, like, checkmate, motherfucker, to Microsoft, but... Yeah. That, I don't think I it would just, be checkmate enough, though. What? Like, it'd be, it'd, it'd be checkmate in the sense that, like, okay, yeah, you sold PS Now, something that people should absolutely have, but, like... There's more that goes in into the race between Xbox versus PlayStation than just PS Now and Xbox Game Pass. Like Game Pass is definitely significant for Microsoft right now, but it's not the only thing. And for PlayStation I don't to know, give man. up, I think it is. Well, I don't know, man. Well, them have them being able to kind of play everywhere and their whole their whole um, like uprising thing, uh, smart delivery. Like Xbox has plenty of services that kind of go into what makes Xbox special. And even if PS Now is PS, PS now gets to a place where it's better in competition. That doesn't then like make Xbox go out of business by any means, right? That doesn't like that. No, but it definitely like. I mean, here's the thing: like in terms of the war of who wins, who cares? Yeah, like, who cares? It's, for not, sure. like, it's even like look at this gen. It's like oh, Xbox lost. Who cares? Xbox still doing great. Mm. But it's one of those things where you know it. it it's a bit more apples to apples a, a comparison than of. We would be able to compare subscription numbers. Yeah, we would be able to compare like what the what the offering actually is. But I don't like, think that'd be worth PlayStation then giving up the sales on the first party games. Yeah, like I mean, they don't it, care. They don't care that much about that comp that we'll specific see. competition. I don't think so. Like that. Like, Here's the thing: it's not so. about the competition. It's about how do you actually win. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I'm talking. But about I don't think PlayStation. Thinks, I don't think PlayStation thinks of PS Now is that important. But that's place. that is that them losing then. <laughs> You get I what I'm mean, saying? Yeah, Th things are think... shifting. The the entire industry mm -hmm. is changing. At what point do they have to look at it that way? Because subscription based things are the success of video games. Mm -hmm. Or does that not happen? I mean, I don't I think it I think it kinda happens at a certain point. Like I think subscriptions are gonna be important, but I don't think play I think PlayStation 
can make PS Now worth having without putting all their first party games on there. As long as they do continue to have games like um, mm-hmm. Control and I think they said Wolfenstein uh, and Tomb Raider on there, right? Like that can that can be enough to kind of push PS Now as being something that's worth looking at and worth considering. Absolutely. But I think where PlayStation is at and the way they look at PS Now at this point in time, it would not make them. It would not make it worth it to them to put their games on there in the future. We'll see, but I don't, I also just don't see it. I think they make so much money off of software sales in general for first party games that it just that would that wouldn't make it worth worth it to them. Like even the idea that hey, I mean, PS Now is this banger, banger service. I never I feel, thought we'd see a day that Microsoft would do it. I like, like it, that still shocks me that Halo Infinite is mm-hmm. going to be part of this service. But I feel like it's worth it for Microsoft strategy right now. Like it's more worth it to them than it would be for PlayStation. Like Microsoft doesn't necessarily have that strong of a first party lineup compared to PlayStation in that way, right? They have Halo, which is strong. They have Forza Horizon, which is strong, or Forza in general, which is strong. Um, but they're still in that process of kind of rebuilding and redefining what first party means to them. And I think during this process, right, and during this kind of low period for Xbox, which they're 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 climbing mm-hmm. their way out of, and I'd say they've climbed their way out of, I think that strategy change, that shift in Xbox Game Pass for them is the thing that's kind of helped them climb out of it. But PlayStation isn't really a place where they got to climb out of anything right now. Yeah. And so I, that's why I kind of don't see them doing it at all. Yeah, I, I don't. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. I just think that if they did, I do think it would be a earth-shattering moment. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I, I guess they, I mean, so. they just, they have the lineup, man. Like, that would be, everyone would, I mean, would be, get that. Everybody would get it. But I feel like that conversation ends, like, Maybe like a year later. Like at a, like at a certain point, it becomes like a regular thing, and it doesn't become like this sticking point anymore. Like yeah. it, it doesn't. Be, like I feel like you know, if they did it today, if they announced today that every first party PlayStation PlayStation game is now available on PS Now day one to download, mm-hmm. I feel like that becomes a big conversation over the next year, and then. At a certain point, we just accept it as normal for for both platforms in a way that it doesn't really benefit PlayStation anymore. No, nope. that see, that's, that's, that's right. That, you're that right in the sense that like it would just become commonplace, and like at, when we, us little video game pundits sitting here talking about like who's winning, who's losing. Yeah, sure, that becomes irrelevant. But when you look at the money of it, mm-hmm. it's like if they are putting out titles like Last of Us and Ghost of Tsushima and like Horizon, and there is that like steady cadence, people will never unsubscribe. Uh-huh. Right, it's like the HBO model of like, cool, Game of Thrones ends uh, immediately. We have Watchmen immediately. We have uh, The Outsider, The Outsider, it's not what it's called, the whatever outsiders. the fuck it is. Um, but you see what I'm saying? It's yeah. like that, that's how those things work, and that's a consistent revenue source forever if mm-hmm. you if you don't fuck that up. Yeah. And PlayStation's shown they don't fuck that up. This generation, they have the hits at like mm-hmm. banger after banger after banger, where it's like Microsoft right now they have a lot to prove, and they're building for that. But PlayStation could do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, out the gate. <laughs> I wonder how they make it worth it for them in terms of sales sales and numbers making up for themselves. Like, they're selling PlayStation exclusives at launch for $60, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, in the first three days, God of War sold, I want to say, $3.1 million, mm-hmm. and Spider-Man sold $3.3 million, right? How much do you then charge for a PS Now? Or do you change the price at all? Or, like, how, how do you then balance that so that you are not losing money on on making your, your games available on PS Now day one. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, I, I don't. I think that the traditional way of buying games isn't going to go away anytime soon. Of course, it's going to be an addition to right. Mm. So it's like Halo Infinite still going to sell yeah. a shit ton of physical copies, that, even though it's available on Game Pass. Yeah, will it sell as much as it would have without? Absolutely not. Of course. Yeah, but God of War. If it's getting you to sign up for this service for whatever the, the price is, but it's also instead of selling three point one in the first week, it's selling two point one. Like mm-hmm. w- that helps the balance a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. We'll see. It. It's not we'll going to happen, but yeah. I again, it'd be, I mean, it'd be a, it'd be a wild moment. Like if that was an announcement at E three, that pop would be huge. Like especially going into next gen, if they if they came out and said, and they, they would never say this, but if they came out and said, like, hey. We're announcing Horizon 2, right? Spider Man's coming, God of War's coming, all this stuff. Also, it's gonna be day one on PS Now. That would be the biggest pop. I mean, it would be for next gen, and that would get that would that would get them so much goodwill. But at the end of the day, is is that something that they would do or that they want to do when like the numbers balance out? I'm sure Um, they're doing the math. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sure sure I'm sure they've done the math already. I'm sure they did the math as soon as like Microsoft did it, and they're like, should we do this? And they immediately went, nah. But we'll see. 
Things progress, things grow. We'll see. Gondor's Condor writes in and says, Good morning, Blessing and Tim. Season three of Netflix's Castlevania show dropped today, a series which, as the name implies, draws heavily on the Castlevania video game series. What do you think of the show, and what is your favorite film slash TV series of a video game? Thanks for all you do. Hashtag Greg sucks. Now, you've seen Castlevania, right? I saw season one, and I saw about half season two, mm-hmm. and some shit went down last year, so I got like really distracted for a while, so I never finished it. But I freaking love it, and I can't wait to eventually go back. And I think I'm going to rewatch all of them. Mm-hmm. Like, rewatch season one, finish two, and then go into three. Have you seen it? No. I've seen the first episode, and I was like, I don't think this is for me. It's fucking cool, man. And mm-hmm. I, it really does a good job of growing on itself, and it's adult but it's like it's not the type of adult where it's like ah they're saying the fuck words so they're gonna say it a lot. It's yeah, like, it's like smart. I will uh, say I'm gonna watch because the same dude is doing Devil May Cry, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna watch that. Yeah, that's I mean, Shaggy is a fucking badass, and things he produces tend to be dope as hell. And uh, this is no exception. I love that it's on season three. I love that it's as big of a success as it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's my favorite TV series of a video game? It probably would be Castlevania. They really, really they really are nailing. Like it is ten out of ten. Like it mm-hmm. is exactly what a successful Castlevania show should look like. Now, I'm going to throw a wrench. Pokemon, oh. the animated series. Yeah, it's... it's mm. Really? I mean, no, it's just different. Like, yeah. I, I feel like that's almost cheating, mm-hmm. where it's like, it's it is... It's adapting the story from the video game, you know? Yeah, but it's, it's based like, on the video game. Yeah. It's a video game series. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I mean... Mm. Pokemon, the animated series, wouldn't exist without the video game. They got all the same gym leaders. yeah. I guess. It is. And you're it progressing is. you're progressing through the same like towns and all that stuff and you have the same like you're catching mm. Squirtle and Pikachu or Squirtle and uh Charmander. Yeah. I mean Ash, Castlevania Ash is better one of the Pokemon. names in the game. That you can choose from. But you you're, you're sticking to Castlevania? Yeah. I think, I think I'm going to have to go uh, Pokemon the Animated Series. Unless I can think of another one. I was, I'm was i going to type this in, actually. I mean, I, I love Pokemon, obviously. Video game but TV series. It's no Digimon, I'll tell you that. How dare you? Digimon's fantastic. I mean, I'm not saying it's not good. Digimon the movie? Fucking great. It has its moments. No, it's great all the way through, Tim. Yeah? Yeah. When they play the bare naked ladies? Yeah, dude. Without context? It's been a long week since you looked at me. And Sora's just there like, oh, do I like Ty or do I like Matt? This wasn't set up Hey, dude, that second all. arc was dope as hell, man. I fucking love where they're on the internet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, Omnimon? Let's yeah. fucking go. Dude, hey. So cool. Did you know that there was a... a f- this we're this is a whole whole other tangent. Yeah, but sweet. did you know the guy that that made that like the I don't know I, I guess he was the designer like the guy that did the art style or whatever mm. made a a remake of that second part of the movie <gasps> as its own thing. It's called what? Summer Wars. What, dude? I'm bring this shit up right now. <laughs> We're looking at the funny up, games man. daily getting hijacked. This is now Digimon. <laughs> Digimon in real. Did you know what I was see? thinking did you know about a few coming? days ago? I was thinking about Digimon. Beyblade. And I okay. tried to and I tried to look up Beyblade because I wanted to rewatch some of it, but I I couldn't find it anywhere. But I used to love Beyblade. Yeah. Like I used to like Beyblade used to be my jam. Like it used to be up there for me. I I was a little too old for that. Oh man. Yu Gi Oh was the the end of my. Oh, Yu Gi Oh was my jam. Oh, Yu Gi Oh was like my favorite. It was of those. so good. It's it's ridiculous how good Yu Gi Oh was. Like I went back and rewatched a lot of Yu Gi Oh within yeah. the last few years, and I'm like, no, this holds up. This is really good. I, I like, fucking love it. Yu Gi Oh worked because it made the card game the point. Yeah, you know, so it's like I actually played the card game. Oh Unlike, yeah, same. like Pokemon, where it's like we just collected the cards. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it this one? Yeah. No. Look up a trailer of it, man. Summer Wars. Really? Is that not a Drake yeah. song from his last album? <laughs> no, that's Summer Games. <laughs> Never mind. Like Barrett, your mind's about to be freaking blown when you see Summer Wars trailer. All right, hold on, hold on. Look at another trailer. Let's go. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. This is not gonna get this claim, right? Uh, uh, it might. Who cares? <laughs> it's a Thursday. Funimation. Just skip forward. So we're watching Summer Wars theatrical trailer. It's not showing me like the previous December 10th. Weird. Or December 2010. One of those. Go, go more to like where things start popping off. Whoa. Hell yeah. This whole segment, dude. Oh my god. But dude, like literally, it's they just turned that into a whole movie that's not Digimon. But it might as well be, because <laughs> it's the exact same thing. What's happening? Dude. This is I want to fucking watch this, man. It's this pretty cool. Dope as hell. Isn't it? Hell yeah, man. But I also want to rewatch. I, re- I want to rewatch the Digimon movie. I'm just saying. 
It's like impossible to find. I've been like jonesing to watch it. It's impossible. Is it? <laughs> like I can't find it anywhere. Huh. That's weird. I have it. If anybody out there can let me know how I can watch Beyblade without <laughs> um, having to buy like an Amazon DVD, oh, <laughs> just, just hit me up. Just let me know. Now it's time to squad up. Thomas writes in and says, "Hey, kind of fellows, I've been working my way through all the Assassin's Creed games, just like Barrett Cordy over there." Which one and is he on? I'm currently trying to 100% AC Unity. I'm looking oh. for some KFBFs to play all the cooperative missions and get all the available gear. I'm available weeknights after 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks and hope to see you on the streets of Paris. Paris is what they Paris. call it in French. In France. That's featured in Animusha 3. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Unity, I'm just going to say I haven't gotten there yet. Mm. I'm, I'm still working my way through AC3. But Unity, I'm going to say is underrated. And if I was already at unity Under, okay. i would play with you but i'm not there yet so wait, wait a few months and barrett yeah. will squat up with you <laughs> thomas is the aqua chicken on ps4 the aqua chicken now it's time for kind of funny.com slash you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> let's see what we got wrong today uh, Gondor's Condor writes in and says, Blame It On Me charted up to number seven on the Hot 100. I'm surprised. I feel like if you heard Blame It On Me, you would recognize it. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. for sure. You can put the blame on me. Uh, Steven Querible writes in and says, On Akon from Wikipedia, quote, In, in 2018, Akon announced he was working. <laughs> I love you so goddamn much, Wes. <laughs> I love that we get to do this. <laughs> he was working with the Senegalese government to build a tourist city with a cryptocurrency-based economy named Akon City. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Then more people tell uh, wrote in to tell me that uh, Blame It On Me peaked at number seven. Uh, <laughs> Akon, Akon is, City? <laughs> Akon is actually doing really good things in Africa, including the expansion of solar energy. All right. <laughs> but he's calling it Akon Energy. Let's see here. Remember when he fucked someone on stage? <laughs> what? It happened. I think that's what Blame It On Me was, Blame it on I me was about. I think it was. Yeah. 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 Uh, somebody, see, this isn't you're wrong, but and I'm, I don't want to set a precedent, mm. but I'm going to read it because I like the idea. Somebody I don't like says, setting uh, this precedent. I'm not going to say the name, though. That's how I'm going to not say the precedent. Um, somebody said Millie Bobby, Bobby Brown is Ellie in The Last of Us. I don't see it. I don't. I, she's. she's no. I, I will, I'm going to bring. Yeah. And too old for it. There I'm was gonna, a tweet going viral right now. I'm going. I'm bringing up the one that Andy retweeted. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Boom, this motherfucker. Right here. Oh. Fuck you. Yes. Oh. Wait, who's, who's that on the left? It's the Jamie dude Lannister. from Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. I've not, I've, I don't watch Game of Thrones. But yeah, girl yes. on the right. From uh, she's from uh, Book Smart. Book Smart. Yeah, she would be great, and, and she's also Nathan she Drake's like daughter it. in Uncharted Four. No shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. First of all, spoilers, but wow. Yeah. Wow. That game's been out for fucking four years. Guys. Also, she she was recently in. I don't know the name of the the show, but uh, it was a really 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 like dark drama, and she killed it in it. So mm. like, I, she would she'd be great as Ellie. Let's go. I'm down. Hmm. Let's see. Not, uh, Christian Rice says, not a year wrong, but this might be helpful. You can just call Undernight Inbirth EXE late CLR Unicler. Thank you. <laughs> I've, I've actually been calling it Unicler, but I've been wanting. I, I know most people listening to the show won't know it as Unicler. That's why I've been <laughs> uh, branching it out or like saying the whole thing. But if I do say Unicler, that means I'm talking about Undernight Inbirth EXE late CLR because it's a, it's a ridiculous name. Uh. People are pointing out that she's uh, 20, 24. So maybe if they if they eventually pull elements from Last of Us Part Two, she could that play girl. Old. Yeah, yeah. But she's twenty four, but she looks like she's like seventeen. Yeah. How old was Ellie in? The yeah, first I guess game? Ellie is younger than that. But like, Cause she's like what twelve or thirteen in the first game. Yeah. I feel like she could uh, like play older Ellie if they go into the future stuff. Tomorrow's hosts are me and Imran, the Don Khan. Oh. Of course, this. Has been kind of funny games daily, each and every weekday live right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash kind of funny games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily.